All right, I'm back here to continue on with the Jaws of the Lion campaign for the new introductory game for Gloomhaven. I uh, have not played regular base Gloomhaven, so this is my first um, interaction with the Gloomhaven game. And I've done uh, scenario one and two. Those videos are also up on the channel if you haven't seen those yet. In between scenarios, there were a couple of things that we did. So at the end of scenario two, each character got 25 gold, and they got some gold for the money tokens that we found during Scenario 2. Had the ability to um, buy items now in the city, so it opened up some stuff. And I ended up getting... Um, let me see if they'll show over here. I've got Withered Boots and Healing Potion for the Red Guard Crowley. And I also got boots and a potion, but I got different boots and a different potion for Killian the Hatchet. I'll show them here real quick. The power potion and the winged shoes. And I'll uh, go through more in detail of what they do uh, when and if I use them in this scenario. There were lots of really cool looking items that I wanted to get. Um, and I ended up saving just a little bit of gold to maybe get some more pieces of armor and maybe a weapon upgrade for Killian the Hatchet. Other rules, things that happened, uh, we replaced, or actually we didn't replace, we added two cards to each deck. So um, cards that have a level one at the top that have some persistent effects for the entire round on it for the, um, in the Red Guard deck there. And then in the Hatchet deck, You'll be able to see these cards more up close when I use them. I'll put them over on the side there that shows them up higher on the screen. Um, so Killian's got an interesting card here called the Favorite that uh, marks a target with his marker. And he gets extra attack against it. And then when that um, target dies, the marker stays down in the hex and you have to pick it up as loot. But then he also got this retrieval card. And if he uses this, uh, later to attack the same target, he can pick up his token off of the target instead of waiting for the target to die and then needing to do another loot action to pick it up. So you got a little bit of efficiency gain if you can combo these two cards together. And then there's experience here on um, Killian's Hatchet card here for the favorite. And I didn't see experience on... Oh yeah, there's one experience here on Healing Sands. Just missed it. Uh, that's the heal on the top of that card. Yeah, so we added some more cards. So the deck is now eight cards. And then new rules that were brought in to scenario three. The first part talks about how there is a supplemental scenario book, but for this scenario, it's not any more of the map. It's just the conclusion. So when I get to the conclusion, I'll have to grab that supplemental book and read out of there. Difficult terrain is added. So difficult terrain is outlined in purple. You can see it here. It costs two movement points to enter and you can you can jump over it also monsters will take into account that extra movement cost when they're trying to determine focus section breaks so there's some more story up here that coincides with each of the doors um, i haven't read that yet so i'll read that when the door gets open and experience i talked about already active bonuses i talked a little bit about with the new red guard cards that are um, persistent through the round. Uh, the uh, favorite card is also an active card that will stay up here in the active um, position and just um, continue to add benefit. Shields are also being introduced. So a shield will reduce the amount of damage taken after all of the uh, multipliers and the modifier deck and everything is applied. Uh, jump. Some abilities now have jump on the cards. Jump allows you to ignore the extra cost for the difficult terrain, and you can also um, jump over obstacles, and you can jump over enemy figures, but you cannot stop on them. So you have to have enough move to make it completely over the obstacle or completely over the uh, enemy figures. There's some new conditions. Poison, wound, and then there's uh, curse and bless cards are getting introduced here. Long rest is another new concept for this particular scenario. So long resting takes place of your turn, so you do not choose two cards in order to do a long rest. You go on initiative 99, 
and then you get to choose one of your discard pile or one card from your discard pile to transfer over into your lost pile and then you get the rest of your discard back into your hand so it's a little bit different than short rest because short rest is a random card that gets discarded long resting you also heal two hit points and any item or any card that had to be uh, spent um, can be re-rotated back and be used again so like um, the boots when you use them, you have to rotate them on their side and show that you've used them. But when you long rest, you can uh, put them back up like that and use them again. Multi-monster focus is another section in the rules that gets introduced in this scenario. If a monster can attack multiple targets, it'll first do its primary focus as normal, and then it will move to try to get as many enemies as it's allowed to target, still making sure that it's got its primary focus as its main target. So it won't move to attack multiple targets if that means that it will no longer attack its mul its uh, primary target is the way that I'm going to think about it and I think that's correct. Monster active bonuses. Some of these monsters have um, bonuses on them for when they, when they attack you. Like the Zealot Elites will wound. There are no Zealot Elites here, but the Giant Vipers will both poison. And I didn't see anything in the rules that like they have to be successful in attacking you. Just I think if they, just if they can attack you. So if even if they get a zero, I don't know what happens on the null though. I could not find that. So if you know, can you put it in the comments? If they have an ability like poison here on the giant vipers, if they draw the null out of the monster deck, does that mean that the poison doesn't attach as well? If it comes up, I'll spend time looking in the the glossary. I'm not going to spend time looking at it now. Oh, and I forgot also, we did get another. So the this scenario, scenario three, takes place uh, on the black ship here at the docks of Gloomhaven. Uh, as far as setting up the scenario, there's a treasure chest here. Uh, there's two damage traps with th that'll do three hit points um, if someone trips the trap. Two coin tokens. There's a room over here and another central room here, so the enemies have not been set up there yet. Just these two um, zealots. And I'll shuffle these up a little bit while I read the introduction. After getting your fill of stew and plenty of rest at the Sleeping Lion, you start off early in the morning. The first order of business is looking for information on someone named Roland. He seems to be making a trade out of buying fresh corpses, and you'd like to know why. It's slow going at first, but you eventually find a pair of vermlings down in the sinking market who seem overly interested in cadaver disposal. After some rough persuasion, they cough up that they, too, are being paid by a man named Roland to deliver bodies. They even give you the drop-off location, some derelict ship at the old docks. You head down to the pier and look around. It doesn't take long to spot the suspicious vessel. Not only is it leaking some vile black liquid from the hull, but there are two men wearing red robes standing guard outside on the dock. These two. They notice you eyeing them and begin making threatening gestures for you to move along. Looks like getting to the bottom of this is going to require cracking a few more skulls. So the goal here is again to kill all the enemies. I am gonna try to loot this again. Just find it interesting to see what they've got inside those treasure chests in these. Just do these real quick. Basic giant viper cards. That's good enough. And I'll shuffle these in real quick. All right. So I think we're ready to just go right into card selection I've got my guys out on the board I think everything is set up it's gonna be a little harder to see the initiative tokens this time because it's really hard to read the the enemy names especially when they're that far away from the camera but I think you can still tell which one is the hatchet which one is the red guard and which ones are enemies so you can at least see when enemies will be going uh, let's take a real quick peek. The Zealots, we've got two normals. They've got six health, two movement, and two attack. I don't know what's inside their deck, so we'll learn that as we go. 
hit point tracks have been set to 10 and 8. Yeah, I think that's everything. So what do I think I want to do? These guys both have six hit points. Um, so maybe I'll try to hit both of them with the red guard, get the red guard maybe to here. It depends on if um, if they go first, then it could they could move and uh, mess up those those plans, which is I guess the point of playing a strategy game like this, right? You never know exactly what's going to happen when you're making these choices. So we've got a move two, jump, shield one. I might want to save this jump in case I I don't rest before I get over to here, and I want to get around this difficult terrain over here. This move here is all attacks targeting you gain disadvantage this round. So I wouldn't have to make sure that I got to go first to get this card out and active. What do I got that targets multiple guys? This is an attack two, target all adjacent enemies. Goes on 38. Let's put that out as a candidate. One, two, three, all, and all attacks targeting him will gain disadvantage this round. Sure, so let's go on 32. And let's see what we got here. Now I might just wanna get the favorite out. So place one of your Character tokens on this card. You may add plus three attack to any of your ranged attacks by moving the token. I don't think I have an, a, an attack on the bottom. So maybe I want to get rid of these guys as quickly as possible. So maybe I'll actually save that for um, a round where maybe I'm just moving towards the door. Because I'm not going to get any damage off using the top of this card right now. And I want to probably save Retrieval to combo with that. I know I've got some multiple target. There we go. Double throw. Target's two. It's pretty slow, though. Um, got a move two that I can make an adjacent enemy take a damage. It's going to get me up close and personal there. Wow, these are so slow. This is a move 5 at 18, 51 and 64. If this one immobilize, this is an adjacent enemy, so that's not going to do anything, but it does have a move 3 and I might just want to use it or maybe I just, yeah, because the whole point of this one was to do that damage after I moved. And I don't want to lose the card, so maybe I pick a card to just do a basic, um, basic move with. I'll go at 35 and either move 3. Do the basic move or move three, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so 32 and 35. So we'll flip to see when the zealots are gonna go. 77. Uh, so we don't have giant vipers, so get that out of here for now. So we've got Crowley the Red Guard going at 32, then Killian at 35, and the zealots at 77. Ah, and they're going to poison. Yeah, that's a bummer because I don't think I'm going to take them out. All right, so let's get into it. I do have the healing potion, so you can get rid of poison if you heal. You just don't actually heal any hit points. It just gets rid of poison, and that's also true of wound, I believe it is. Yep, remove when healed. All right, so we're going to do the bottom of 
healing sands, which is move three. So one, two, three. And then all attacks against you gain disadvantage this round. So just so I don't forget, I'm going to take it off of here now and put it up here in my active area because it'll so it'll remain active for this round and not go in my discard pile. So that was the bottom of that card, and then twirling stabs is the top. Attack two, target all adjacent enemies. So I'll go for the guy up here in the front first. So it's two plus one is three, and that is standee number four. Um, so yep, three damage. So and now the guy in the back is attack two plus one is three. And that is standy six. All right, so this will go in the discard. Now hatchet goes next. Oops. Gonna do the, let's do the top of double throw first. So it's attack two, range three, target, Two. Oh, nope, I'm not going to do that because I need to get within range. I was hoping if maybe I took him out, I could do the move on stopping power and loot the coin, but I need to get it within range. So I'm just going to, I'll do the bottom of stopping power first. I don't have an adjacent enemy to immobilize, so I'm just move three. Um, and I don't want to get disadvantaged, so I need to stop there. But it still gets me within range. One, two, three of both of them. So the top of double throw is attack two. And I'll go again with the guy in the front. That's two, oops, plus zero is two more on standee four. So he's got one health left. And then the standee number six is attack two minus one. So one. And he's got two health left. Okay, so now that is both of the players' turns. I'll go on the discard pile. Focus for both of these guys. If we do it in order, we start with this guy. He's num number four, Sandy number four. Um, obviously, Crowley's closest, so he will be the focus. Uh, he wouldn't be moving anyway, but if he did, it would be move minus one. He's attack minus one, so his base is two, so that makes it attack one, and he's going to poison him. Uh, so a monster deck, we're at attack one, plus zero is one damage, so from ten down to nine. And poison. And then poison, all attacks gain plus one attack. So he will get another damage when standing number six attacks in here in a minute. Okay, so that is both of the actions for standing four. Moving on to six, he's not gonna move either. His attack minus one is also a one plus the poison makes it two. So he goes from nine down to seven. Oh, I screwed up. Backtrack. The whole, the whole reason I did this was to get disadvantaged. So the first attack, let me take this back to nine. First attack, these would have been the first two cards to draw. Neither of them is worse than the other one, so it's still a plus zero. So that would be standing number four's attack. This is a good lesson to remember, to check and remember all of your uh, things that are happening on the board. He's still going to get poisoned from standing number four's attack. Now we do out a standee six. His attack is two, minus one, so he's currently at a one. We draw two cards, so we've got a minus one and a plus one. So the minus one takes effect. So that uh, takes it down to zero, but he's poisoned, so that's plus one. So one more damage, so from nine to eight. I think I backtracked that correctly. And the reason that had actually reminded me is because I was about to remove this, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to draw the two cards for every attack. So this is a persistent 
ability, or it's an active ability during the round. The round is over, so that's going to go down there. I won't be short resting, so now I go back to card selection. Nobody drew anything to shuffle the decks. Okay, so Crowley now, I'm not going to do this attack because um, it's ranged and I'll be disadvantaged. Don't think, I, and this is attack is also at range. And this attack is also at range. So this attack here, this one would wipe both of them out because it's hard, it's two adjacent enemies suffer two damage. And one of them is at five and one of them is at four. So they would both be they both be taken out because they have a maximum of six hit points. So now the question is just what I what do I want to set as the initiative? Because I do not. Now maybe it'll be okay to open the door. I think it'll be okay to open the door. Maybe I'll plan on um, Killian coming and opening the door. Let me just take a real quick peek at his hand. Yes, because if both both of those guys are taken out, oh, it's move one, loot one. He won't move quite far enough to be able to loot both of those. But I want to do that and take the opportunity, this opportunity to get the favorite card out. So he can loot one. So then my plan is going to get Crowley over here to be able to loot one, and we'll open the door on the next turn. So these are going to be Killian's two cards and Crowley will, what should I play? I think I will play, so I'm definitely playing that card to take both of those guys out and I want maybe this initiative to make sure I go quickly. I am poisoned, but poisoned will only hurt me if I get attacked, and I don't think I'm going to get attacked. I do not think that these zealots, I don't know for sure, but I don't think these zealots have an initiative faster than 14. So I've got 14 and 17 as my initiatives. Let's see what the zealots get. Oh, 19. That was close. That was close. So it's still Crowley, Killian, and then the Zealots. So we'll start here with playing the cards. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is shield spikes. Two adjacent enemies suffer two damage. There are no card modifiers, attack modifiers drawn. To modify this, it's just a straight up two damage. And standing number four already has five, so that's going to take that guy out. Oops, number four. And then we drop a loot on that spot. And standing number six took four damage last turn. He's going to get two more for a total of six. Taking him out and dropping the loot coin on there. And then I'll do the bottom of Shocking Advance. I really only want to move one space. I'll move there and pick up this coin. Okay, that's Crowley's turn. Both of those are discards. We'll go to Killian. So the top part of the favorite is going to will require me to get one of my little markers out. So that one will just go up in my active area. And then I'm going to do the bottom of retrieval. And I might as well, I'm actually not even going to, I'm going to do it for the basic move. It gets me closer to the door and I can still loot the same coin. So the basic action of moving two spaces to get that coin. Okay, so that was the bottom and then the top of the favorite just getting the favorite card right there into my active area and then retrieval goes into 
to discard. So Zealots didn't get to go because they were taken out. So that is the end of the round. Nobody drew any cards that need to get shuffled. I'm not doing short rests. Just get into the uh, next room here. So there are going to be some Vipers and another Zealot in here. Um, what can... I've got a pull. I've got two pulls. This is an attack three at range two. So I could get... Let's see, if I get here with three movement, that would give me enough range to attack that zealot back there. And maybe I try to go this way with Killian to get over here. There will be a viper, some vipers over here, but I do want to loot this. So that's, that's interesting. It'd be nice if I could push this viper into this trap to get it out of the way so I can open this door. Oh, I guess I can open it from here. It's just more movement. But I do love doing the uh, pushing and pulling the the uh, the monsters into the traps. So what do I have as far as his push ability? Oh, it pushes an adjacent enemy to Yep, yeah, so that might that's a little ways off to try to set that up. Uh, what do I got as far as attacks left? I got a range three attack. So three from this guy. If I get to end up here, I can maybe attack both of those guys. And that would muddle. Because it will target three. It does only an attack one. I think that's okay. So I need to get to there, or even if I get, no, that would be too far away. That would be four away from that guy up there. But I would be within, if I could here, I'd be within three of both of the Vipers. So maybe I leave Crowley to take care of the Zealot, and Killian goes after the Vipers. Yeah. And then maybe they could set up into this pattern for the next turn. They have poison, which is bad. I do have the power potion, so I could I could buff this one that that targets three. Yeah, so the thing that's kind of a bummer is if I the spot that I would need to stand on to hit all of them with that with this disorienting barrage is right where that trap is. And I doubt it's worth taking three damage to just to set that up. So I think I'm going to muddle the two vipers. So if I need why well, I want to move here, don't I have a move five? I do have a move five and it's initiative 18, which is good. So I think that's going to be Killian's turn. Oh, and I can also place one of my character to I can add a plus three attack to any of my ranged attacks by moving the token from this card to the target after the attack ability is resolved. When the target dies, place the token on the hex in which it died. Yeah, so maybe I'll even be able to take out, say, like this Viper on this turn by using his token, his favorite token. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I don't think I can get up close and personal to do a melee attack. Oh, but this Desert Knight targets one enemy within two hexes. So even if I get to here, I could disarm the Zealot. Seems good. 
Oh, wow. But these initiatives are so high for these two cards, 87 and 90. So the zealot might actually end up moving first. So the zealot might actually end up here. But it's target within two, so I don't think it matters if I get uh, that close to do it. Yep. Got to play him at some point. I mean, you don't have to. You could rest as well. This would target two guys within two. No, I think I'll save. I'll save it. All right, I'm just going to go at initiative 87, so I'll go kind of slow. So let's see. Oh, we don't draw the Zealot card yet because we have not even opened the door. So, so technically that is not there right now. We've got Killian is going to go first at 18, and then Crowley. All right, so these are the two cards. We're going to do second win first. At the bottom, move five. So one, and we get to read the story because it has a, a green one on it. You burst into the cargo hold, and a foul smell hits you in the face. A river of sticky black liquid flows through the ship, pouring between the various cracks in the hull. The source appears to be beyond the far door, but first you'll have to fight your way past more ruffians and their pets. Okay. So as soon as I open the door, we've got some more enemies to put out. So we've got a zealot there. And I have two, let me randomly put them down on the board. So the top one up there is going to be that one. That's standy five, and we've got standy six right there. Okay. These are small enough. I don't know if people like seeing them that way so they can see the art. The zealot's too big. He covers like one and a half hexes. I'll leave them like that. So you can see the art on them. If they start getting in the way, then I'll stand them up. So that was one of the five movement. So that's one, two, three, four, five into the difficult terrain. And then I want to do the top of disorienting barrage. It's attack one, range three, target three, and muddle. But I want to mark... Oh, I also have to do this. I should have done this before I continued moving, but so we draw the initiative cards for, or the uh, action cards for the enemies that are in the room. And we got 27 and 43. So the zealot will go next. Then the vipers will go and then Crowley will go. Okay, so I had moved, yep, yeah. so I was going to mark, I think I want to mark, now let me see what retrieval, does retrieval have to be adjacent? Oh, I already played retrieval. Yeah, that's a, a, a melee attack. I'm just going to mark, I'll mark this guy, six, the guy right in front of me. I don't know if I should put it here or remember. I'll put it there. All right, and I think I will draw for um, this guy first. So it's attack one modified by zero. <coughs> and my favorite gives it plus three, so that's four damage in total on number six, and they only have three health. So that actually takes them out. So the favorite token gets dropped as well as 
a, a loot, a coin token. So that was good. And now uh, I'll hit standing number five. It's attack one plus one is two. Oh, there's one other thing I forgot to do. Let me get this damage out. Standing number five is two damage. When I play the favorite, I get two experience points for playing that. So that goes up to two. And um, also puts Muddle on the Viper there, Standy 5. All right. I think that is it for Killian's turn. Both of these cards are discarded. Now we go to the Zealot. So the Zealot is next. Heal one on self. He's not damaged. Move plus one. Let's get focus here. So one, two, three, four gets him in range to attack Killian. One, two, three, four, five gets him in range with focus here. So, or if he was going to attack Jason here, oh, he's doing ranged. He's doing a ranged attack. And his range is two, so one, two. So he just needs to make it to here, which, yeah, puts Killian also as the focus. So, and it's move plus one. So his move is uh, base is two, so two plus one is one, two, three to there. He's attack minus one with range of two. So he will attack. Killian, so the modifier. His base attack is two. He's at minus one, so he's at one. Minus two is zero. So nothing happens. Now we go to the Vipers are next in the initiative order. Uh, Killian is the focus again. He move plus one with jump. So this difficult terrain is not really going to matter and his base movement is two so he would have three but he only needs to move two here to get adjacent he's got attack minus one so I'll mod draw the modifier and he's muddled so we got to draw two right because he's at disadvantage oh no and plus one good thing I remembered the muddle so null is no attack at all See, and this is where I question, does the poison still attach or not? This is the thing that I didn't want to look up. Um, is there maybe like a null reference in the glossary? So this is what learning new games is all about. No, I don't know if that actually is called the null card. Well, I'm going to play it because I, I did read this conditions thing earlier and I didn't see anything that said that you would not apply it if uh, if they if they completely missed or maybe it's called a miss money token model monster movement maybe attack modifier Attack ability, attack modifier card, and null, which sets the attack value to zero. So all it does is just sets the attack value to zero. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about not applying a condition, so I'm still going to apply it. All right. So that is poison on Killian. No damage came through, but um, poison is not great. All right, so now it is Crowley's turn.
and I was going to do the top of Desert Knight and the bottom of Blinding Sickle. So the bottom of Blinding Sickle is move four. I think I'll go one, two, three, just to get here. And then uh, the uh, attack on Desert Knight is an attack two, target one, enemy within two hexes. There's a modifier here, uh, but it's not at disadvantage because it's not a ranged attack. It just targets an, an enemy within two hexes. So it's attack two and modified by, oh, times two. Got some shuffling to do on these decks after this, here, here, and here. All right, so two, that makes four damage at the times two, and that's standing number one. In addition to that, ooh, it's disarm. Where are the disarm tokens? They're probably way down at the bottom. What do they look like? It's the first time I've actually had a, the disarm. It looks like a little hand. There we go. Disarmed. And that will carry over to the next round because he's already gone. All right, so that was Crowley's turn. Um, everybody's got two cards left. Do I want a short rest? Are these the cards that I want to use? Um, see, I don't know. Loot one. That means I would. I'm ex both of these attacks are ranged, so I would have to move. I'd have to take a step back. I've got to move two with jump and shield one, but they're both ranged two. Oh, this is nice. If I can move two with jump and then do this attack, if the attack doesn't take him out, he's got four damage on him already. I could pull him onto that trap. Yeah, both of these would pull them onto that trap. This one targets two. I'd get disadvantage if I jumped. Oh, I, oh, I can't use the jump and the top on this one. So I'd have to use the jump and the top of this. Okay, that seems okay. Means I'll have to either short rest at the end of this turn or long rest next turn. I don't think I mind long resting because there will there probably won't be any other enemies in the room. Uh, and Killian. Got move four and loot one, but I lose the card. Then I've got an attack three, range three. If I get over here and loot, I'll get my favorite token back and loot everything over here. Let's do it. Killian's been getting most of the the money so far in this game. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do the shuffling. So actually before, I just noticed that and remembered that when I went up here to grab that and that had the uh, shuffle icon on it. So the monster attack modifier deck is shuffled. The basic zealot cards, there's only four of them. Trying to shuffle four cards. It's interesting. And the Viper card too. They actually have not gone yet, so the Muddle... They did go, didn't they? 
Yeah. He did go. So the muddle is going. That's how I got the null. That's right. And I'll do this one real quick. Just plop these back here in the middle. Mix it around. And just double check. Yep, no shuffle there. Okay, so I've got their initiatives and I'll draw the monster ability cards. There's that 77 again for the Zealot and the Viper, it's gonna go on 43. So we've got 16 for Crowley. So Red Guard first, Hatchet second, uh, Killian the Hatchet at 24, 43 for the Viper, so we'll switch Viper and Zealot. All right, Crowley first. Check out the cards. Gonna do the bottom of Swift Strength move two with jump and i get shield one till the end of the round it's nice so i'm jumping over the trap and i should not have to take into consideration that this is difficult terrain because i'm using jump and i believe that's correct shield three jump each hex of movement is unaffected by all terrain and enemy figures jumping can move through obstacles enemy figures yeah, so it just it says that each hex of the movement is unaffected by all terrain. So if that fact that it's difficult terrain doesn't matter. Okay, so that was the bottom, and I'm going to grab this and put it up here just so I remember, hopefully, remember that I have shield one. Then I'm going to do the top of Flaming Strike against the Zealot. So it's attack three at range two. So it's three plus zero is three. He already has four, then that's gonna take him out. Grab the coin, drop the coin there. Okay, so the zealot is off. And that is the end of Crowley's turn. So now, after Crowley is Killian, so Killian's two cards. Yeah, um, that's right. I forgot what I was going to do. I had to look at the cards again real quick. So I'm going to move first with the bottom of center mass you know what i don't even need to do oh no i was going to do the move the bottom of close cuts move for loot one yeah one two three and then uh, loot one so that loots this treasure chest this coin and his favorite token and the chest is number 10 so we have to go to the treasure table at the back for number 10 it says fateful compass item 27 hmm so it's an item gotta grab the item deck real quick out of the box and look for item 27 fateful compass during your turn force one enemy within range three to perform a move to action with you controlling the action so this is a small item. Um, I think you check the restriction on items that you're carrying at the beginning of the scenario. So I don't think I'm restricted on the fact that I, I should still be able to carry this with me. 
That's cool. I like that. Okay, so that was the bottom of closed cuts. And now I have center mass. The top is attack three, range three. I will attack the, uh, the viper. So it's attack three plus one. More than enough to get rid of him. Take his damage off. Drop the mummy token. All right, so that was both of Killian's actions. This close cuts card is, I have to lose it because I did the move four loot one. So that's gonna end up over here on the lost side. All right, I think I've been fortunate enough that Oh, I wonder if I missed a poison. I can't remember. I know Killian did not get attacked again, so he would not have taken a poison. I'm not sure. I don't think this scenario is going to end up with me out on the brink of uh, one hit point, but we'll see. Uh, end of the round, this uh, persistent round card would go to discard. So I think I'm going to long rest next turn, so I won't be short resting at the end of the round. I want to long rest to, to heal. I won't heal any hit points, but I will get rid of these two poison markers. Yeah. So my next turn or my next the whole next round is going to be long rest long rest so i actually get to pick i'll start with crowley here i pick a card to lose um someone needs to get here to be able to open the door and I'd like to be able to do that without needing to worry about the fact that it's difficult terrain. I do have the winged shoes, but I also have plus one movement, so maybe I don't care that it's difficult terrain. What card? Maybe shocking advance. Hmm. It'd be nice to get this XP from this card. I should play that next turn. This is an attack two, attack two, and it goes pretty quickly. Shocking advance is so fast though. 14 initiative. I like this move six and disarm. That's got to move four on it, move three, move three, move two, maybe just get rid of this loot one. Yeah, okay, I'll lose Flaming Sickle. And then um, my heal. Seems like there was one more thing that happened. along with the healing when you long rest. Oh yeah, you uh, ready, or you your items become usable again. So the heal will not actually heal me any hit points, but it should get rid of the poison. Now long resting here for Killian. What card? Double throws good. Center mass is good. Let's look at high initiative stuff. Range three, attack three. Yeah, having lost a card because of playing it that way, it's worth it though. I think this compass is actually really good. 
double throw. I don't know if I care about pushing people because I don't see any. It is good to push people though so you can um, move. I mean, not move, so that you can attack, not at a disadvantage, in case they're right next to you. Heal three, move five. One, two, three, four. But if I jumped, then that wouldn't matter. So one, two, three, and that would leave me with two movement left. Just trying to see which card I want, want to throw away, so I'm looking to see what's good. Uh, retrieval. Maybe I don't care about being able to retrieve my favorite token. Because I'm almost at the end of the scenario here. Okay. I will lose retrieval and then get my hand back. That I already took care of. Move that treasure chest out of the way. So now we actually do need, and the heal would take the poison. So what I was going to say is we do need to go on to the next round now. So I don't think Crowley is going to be able to get to the door. And I'm not going to stop way back here just to pick up another coin. I think I'm okay with losing another card. So one, two, one. Well, without jump, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, just to open the door. And then if Killian's gonna have jump, if I could get to here, one, two, within range three, I can attack the guy in the back with the favorite token and maybe able to take him out. Um, I think what I'm going to do, with no enemies out on the board, it, it almost doesn't matter what initiative we go at until the door gets opened. So I'm still going to try to go fairly quickly. Okay, so I'm going to go at 32 there. And I'm going to play his boots to get jump for the entire move action. So one, two, three. I'd like to get here. Four. To, to get out of the way of the door here. And also just because I think Crowley's going to be standing there, so I, don't, I can't stop there. Uh, so three. I won't be able to push anybody. Do I have another move three? I have a move five. A move two. And a mobilize and move three, going at 35. Okay, so now where are my range three attacks? This is an attack three, range three, and then I'm gonna add the favorite, so it would be an attack six. Okay, let's do this. We'll do these two. So I'm going at 24 and 32. There's no Viper. So Killian first, Crowley second. We'll see if, oh, this should have been shuffled because it has the shuffle symbol, even though there's no Vipers out there. When a Viper comes out there, got to make sure that has been taken care of because we are going to have an elite viper here. Okay, see how this goes. So we've got the move. I guess it doesn't really matter because I'm going to end up using move three and both of the tops are the same on both of those. But just to make it official, I'll say it's the Bottom of center mass, move three, push two. And 
Wait a minute. That's not right. I needed one, two, three. I needed four movement. Did I grab the wrong card? I thought I talked that through correctly. Because I'm not going to get an extra move. Yeah, no. Huh, that's weird. Still going on 24. Second wind instead of center mass. So it's move five, and I'm going to use the winged shoes so that I have jump during my entire move action. So one, two, three. So that door number two, the, the story up there says, the smell gets even worse when you finally open the door to the back cabin. More of these robed madmen are performing some sort of incantation over an altar piled high with severed limbs and unidentifiable mounds of flesh. With the flies buzzing and the strange guttural howls, all you want to do is get as far away as possible but you have a job to do, so you commence with the killing. Okay, so we have a Zealot there and the Elite Viper there. All right, so that was three. Three of the five movement. And I'm just going to stop here just in case maybe the Viper won't move. Maybe I'll actually go here, because there's an obstacle there. I'm gonna to try to take this guy out, so it might not be that, that bad to go there. Okay, and then the top of center mass is attack three at range three. I wanna use my power potion during your attack, add plus one to the entire attack action. So I'm at now at attack four. And I'm gonna put my favorite token. And do attack plus three. So now I'm at an attack seven. This better not be the null. So seven, oh, times two. Yeah, 14. That, that was not a good day for that guy. Oh, you know what? Not that it's going to matter anymore, but I should have done this also. Who? That was the curse card. And, okay, so the Viper's going at 58. Means the Viper's going last in the turn. And he does have move minus one. So good, he won't be able to get to Killian this turn. I'm pretty sure I'm playing the favorite correctly. It says you can add plus three to any of your ranged attacks by moving a token from this card to the target after the attack ability is resolved. Yeah. And then he died, so I placed it on the hex. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm doing that right. And that is the end of his turn. It's no real sense in doing this. There's nowhere to really move the Viper that makes sense. The Fateful Compass. All right, now Crowley's turn. We've got Desert Knights and Healing Sands. So I'm gonna do the top of Healing Sands to heal four. So healing four, he's gonna go back up to 10, but he's also getting that experience point. And then the bottom of Desert Knight is move six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And that card is gonna be gone into the lost pile. Now this one would persist, so just to play it right, I'll put it up there in the active cards area until the end of the round. So now it is the Viper's turn. 
um, it would be four movement points to get over here and only two around the obstacle this way. So I think Killian would be the focus. He's at move minus one and his base move is two. So he's gonna go there. And then attack plus one and immobilize, but there are no adjacent uh, players. So no attack. End of the round. This would go to discard. Killian's deck has to be shuffled. And I don't think I have anything else that has to get shuffled or moved or anything. So this elite giant viper has five hit points. So now I just want to put some hurting on him and maybe try to get the, some more of those coins up there. Maybe if I have a if Crowley has a loot one or is that the one that I that might be the one I put into the lost pile. Let's see what we got. Is there a loot in here? No. Uh, as far as ranged goes, need to get five damage done. Um, you know, without a loot card, I would really like to be able to attack and then move. Actually, let's see. Oh, it's a, a difficult terrain. Well, this is a move two with jump, and I could do this to get move three to end up here to loot that coin to get Crowley some money. And I get shield one, which would be good. Make sure that he stays the target of the Viper's attack if the Viper survives. Yeah, so let's do that. So we've got a move, and then what do we got for an up close and personal attack? Uh, we've got an attack three. 14 and 16, he's going quick this turn. And then we want Killian Killian's only got three cards left. Let's see. Range three. Attack three. Oops. And I could throw a plus one on it by using the bottom of this card. And, or I could move two to make sure I loot something. Either there or loot up there. I might have to short rest after this. And we'll go at 35. So we're going at 14 with Crowley, the red guard. Put red guard up there. And then 35 for Killian. And let's see when the Viper's gonna go. 43. I think that's the third time this, is that the third time that Toxic Frenzy card has come out? Well, with only four cards, it's not that shocking, I guess. All right. So Crowley at initiative 14. And we're going to use the weathered boots to add one to our movement on the bottom of swift strength. So that makes it a, a move three with jump. So I can go one, two, three end up there. I will get shield one, I'll do that in a second, and I'm gonna get attack three, immobilize, draw the modifier. Attack three plus two is five. That's exactly how many hit points this Viper has. So he is taken out. The loot is dropped. So I went through this with the last scenario, so even though all the enemies are dead, and that's the goal of the scenario, we get to finish the round. Uh, which is good because that does help with um, planning out some of this looting here at the end. All right, so just to be persistent, we'll put that there. Persistent and accurate. So, and Killian's turn. Uh, 
was going to do the bottom of 51 to move 2. And it doesn't really matter, but just because it's there, I'll go here and the end of my turn loot. Oops, I forgot to loot Crowley's coin. We'll loot Crowley's coin, and then he gets his favorite token back. And that's the end. So let me grab the supplemental scenario book and read the conclusion. It certainly doesn't give you pleasure sifting through the human remains on the altar, but it does end up proving useful in between the bouts of vomiting. You find a necklace, one Sandy described in her detail as never leaving the neck of her husband. With this in hand, you can bring at least some peace to the blacksmith's widow and inform the city guard about this whole situation. Still, you have a sneaking suspicion this isn't the end of the trail. These robed men were certainly all underlings, which means Roland is still out there. One could make the argument that this is the city guard's job, but you search the cabin of the ship anyway and find a curious map. It is a crude depiction of the boiler district, and one building is clearly marked. Surely it couldn't hurt to check it out. So the rewards, each character gains one perk. See the next section of the learn to play guide for details. And then we get a new location, a ritual in stone, scenario four in grid C2. So uh, just like the other videos, I'll do the in-between scenario stuff off camera. I am really enjoying um, playing this game. It is, I've only got eight cards and I already find myself um, thinking, and this is very basic scenario. So I'm really liking the way that this is gonna feel like a, I think a thinky kind of dungeon crawlery game not continuing to move forward still in the very beginning very basic stuff here but having a good time again if you see anything that i missed that i didn't already catch or try to rewind um, during the game please leave a comment down below and um, let me know if uh, if you're also playing the game if you're watching this how you're doing what characters you're playing i'd be interested to see uh, some comments on what other folks are doing uh, with Jaws of the Lion. Thanks for watching and see you in the next scenario.